When it comes to the ABCs of Tucson, Arizona, A definitely stands for A Mountain. Tucson's Sentinel Peak in the Tucson Mountains is probably the number one landmark in all of the city and is a fantastic spot for hiking, cycling, and checking out 360 degree views of the old Pueblo. Over a hundred years ago, University of Arizona students used local basalt rock to construct a 160 foot tall block A on the mountain's east face near its summit, giving the peak its nickname. A Mountain. The peak is part of a 272-acre park, the largest natural resource park in the city of Tucson. Hey everyone, it's Kimberly, your go-to real estate agent in Tucson, Arizona, and today we are talking about the ABCs of Tucson, Arizona. If you're new to Tucson, this list should help you get started in your journey around the city, and make sure you include your favorite thing about Tucson in the comments section below. Hit the like and subscribe buttons to follow along with Tucson News, and learn more about things to do and see and know about this city, my hometown, and when you or someone you know is ready to sell or purchase a home in the Tucson area, please reach out to me. All my contact information is in the description below each of the over 700 videos on this YouTube channel about Tucson and real estate. Explore the rest of those after this one. Now let's get back to our list. B stands for the Biosphere 2, located just north of Tucson. This Earth System Science facility has focused on research and outreach about Earth, its living systems, and its place in the universe. It remains the largest closed ecological system ever created. Check out the historically accurate Pauly Shore movie, Biodome, to learn more. Just kidding. B also stands for the Tucson Botanical Gardens, a five and a half acre collection of 20 gardens that each showcase the beauty of the natural plants that thrive in the Sonoran Desert. The Tucson Botanical Gardens was selected as number four in USA Today's 10 Best Reader's Choice Awards for Best Botanical Gardens in 2023. C stands for the Catalina Foothills, the most popular and most expensive area of town to live in, but you get what you pay for in a good way. This unincorporated area on the north side of Tucson, located at the base or foothills of the Santa Catalina Mountains, is close to restaurants, shopping, spas, fitness centers, golf, museums, clinics, and has one of the best school districts in the state. The views are stunning in all directions, whether you're looking to the mountains up north or the city lights after dark to the south. The architecture is unique as most of these homes are custom or semi-custom. D stands for the Arizona Sonoran Desert Museum. This nonprofit 98-acre desert plant and animal oasis is a zoo, aquarium, botanical garden, natural history museum, public publisher, and art gallery all in one. Go when the weather is nice and wear comfy shoes because you will be walking a two-mile outdoor trail surrounded by desert landscape and animals. The museum is world famous and certainly one of the most visited attractions in all of Southern Arizona. E stands for EGs, of course. Easily my favorite slushy drink since my childhood 40 years ago. It's better than any other slushy I've ever had anywhere in the world and is probably my favorite dessert as well. If you're from Tucson, you have your favorite. Mine is strawberry. My sister-in-law's is orange dream. She even had it served at the open bar when she married my brother. E also stands for El Tour de Tucson, a major fundraising cycling event that has been happening here since 1983. Tucson is a bike rider's paradise, and this event is a great opportunity for cyclists of all ages, abilities, and backgrounds to raise money for their favorite charitable organizations. F is for families. Even though we have a ton of college students students and retirees here, Tucson is also full of families. Children of all ages love our parks, hiking, and camping opportunities, shows and concerts, splash pads, and museums. The Catalina Foothills and Vail School Districts are some of the best in the state, but we also offer multiple private and charter school options along with remote learning opportunities for those students who prefer to learn from home. G stands for Green Valley, an unincorporated retirement community just southwest of Tucson. This Tucson suburb is surrounded by copper mines and is near the cycling, hiking, and birding areas of the Santa Rita Mountains. Many of my retired clients seek out homes in Green Valley, especially those who want the conveniences of being near the city of Tucson without having to be in the hubbub of the city itself. H stands for heat, but it's a dry heat, and Tucson usually has a breeze in the air. As a born and raised Tucsonan, I can tell you that if the temperature is in the 90s and I'm in the shade and there's a breeze, 
degrees, it's actually pretty pleasant because our humidity is so low. We Tucsonans gauge our heat based on the days when the temperatures hit 100 degrees or more, which happens on average 68 days a year, according to weather.gov. But last year in 2023, we had a particularly toasty year. We saw 89 days throughout the year where we had the pleasure of basking in at least 100 degrees during the hottest parts of the day. H also stands for hiking. Tucson is completely surrounded by mountains with the Santa Catalinas to the north, the Rincon Mountains to the east, the Santa Ritas to the south, the Tucson Mountains to the west, and the Tortolita Mountains to the northwest. As such, we are a hiker's paradise. My favorite trails are in Sabino Canyon during fall, winter, and spring, and on Mount Lemmon during the summertime because Mount Lemmon Peak is always 15 to 20 degrees cooler than in the city of Tucson. I is for international food and culture. Two thirds of all Tucson restaurants are locally owned and operated, which is a significantly high percentage considering our city's size. We have residents here from countries all over the world, and as such, we have some amazing international cuisine in restaurants and even grocery stores. Sushi, noodles, Greek food, Italian food, and of course, don't forget about our Mexican food, amongst much more. Many of my favorite dining out dishes in Tucson are fused with a Mexican flair, including, but not limited to, the birria pizza at Zio Pepe, the jalapeno burger at Divine Bovine, and pretty much anything from Samurai Sombrero Sushi Restaurant. Explore the rest of this channel for food recommendations and visit TucsonFoodie.com for more information about dining in the Old Pueblo. J is for javelina and other desert animals. Some places have bears, some places have moose. Well, we have fun creatures here also. Everything from coyotes, bobcats, snakes, lizards, tarantulas, occasional deer and mountain lion sightings, and of course, the always fascinating javelina. If you have never seen or smelled one of these stinky peccaries, they sort of look like wild hairy pigs and they typically travel in a squadron, often ranging from six to 10 in a herd, although I've seen as many as 20 at a time. They are practically blind, but they have an amazing sense of smell and they are extremely protective of their babies. Do not get too close if you see one in the wild. They eat practically anything, so don't be surprised if they knock over your trash can a couple times a year and make a mess in an attempt to get a little snack. K stands for Kitt Peak National Astronomical Observatory, found about 50 miles west of Tucson. With more than 20 optical and two radio telescopes, it is one of the largest gatherings of astronomical instruments in the Earth's northern hemisphere. Tucson is an astronomy lover's happy place. I have had multiple clients move to this city simply so they can study astronomy either for profession or hobby. Kitt Peak is open for visitors and tours, and I strongly recommend you check it out when you are visiting or living in Tucson, Arizona. L stands for Mount Lemmon, the highest point in the Santa Catalina Mountains with a summit elevation of just under 9,200 feet. This is probably one of my favorite places in the world since my childhood here. It's about a 45 minute drive from the base of the mountain to the top. And even though you start off surrounded by desert and saguaro cactus, you end up in a pine tree forest with temperatures about 20 degrees cooler than in the city. There is a lake up there and a small town called Summer Haven. And Mount Lemmon is even the home to the southernmost ski destination in all of the country. Endless hiking trails, endless camping opportunities, many cabins that you can rent if you'd like to stay a night. M is for Marana, a small town located just northwest of Tucson. This suburb is really exploding with residential homes, restaurants, and businesses. This area of the city is popular for anyone who needs easy access to Interstate 10, easy access to Phoenix, or easy access to the city of Tucson without having to actually live in the city of Tucson, where homes are generally older and a little more expensive than Marana. Several Marana neighborhoods are very family friendly, but probably my favorite area of Marana is Dove Mountain, which features golf courses, a resort, lovely parks, and stunning views of the Tortolita Mountains. I do sell real estate in Marana, so reach out to me if you'd like to learn more about selling or purchasing in this popular suburb, which is one of the fastest growing towns in all of the state of Arizona. N stands for National Park. Saguaro National Park is a 92,000 acre park consisting of two separate areas, the Tucson Mountain District to the west and the Rincon Mountain District to the east. Both districts preserve Sonoran desert landscapes, fauna, and flora, including the giant saguaro cactus. There are endless hiking trails in both Saguaro National Park east and west. Growing up in Tucson, I never really respected the saguaro cactus 
practice the way I should have, but it really is absolutely stunning. And the fact that we have so many of them here on display is truly miraculous. O is for Oro Valley, my personal favorite suburban town located six miles north of Tucson. I love Oro Valley because it's clean. The mountain views are gorgeous. Their bike and walking paths are literally everywhere. Their parks are lovely. And let's be honest, I love to eat and Oro Valley restaurants are outstanding. The Arizona Daily Star newspaper calls Oro Valley the upscale tech mecca of Southern Arizona, as it is home to over 10 high tech firms and has a median household income nearly 50% higher than the US median. Along with the Catalina foothills, Oro Valley is one of the other most expensive areas to purchase real estate in all of the Tucson area. But again, you get what you pay for. It's a great place for families, working professionals, and retirees alike. P stands for Pima County, where Tucson is located. Pima County is the second most populous county in the state of Arizona, with over a million people residing here. The county is named after the Pima Native Americans, also known as Tohono O'odham, who are indigenous to this area. P also stands for Pima Community College, which consists of five campuses, four education centers, and several adult learning centers, offering traditional and online instruction for about 150 programs, as well as workforce training, non-credit personal interest classes, and post-baccalaureate certificates. PCC is one of the largest multi-campus community colleges in the U.S. and has a great reputation all throughout the state. I highly recommend Pima Community College if you're interested in higher education at a fraction of a university price tag. Q is for quail and other desert birds. Tucson is a bird watcher's paradise, especially Madera Canyon in the Santa Rita Mountains to the south of the city. There are over 500 species of birds just in the Tucson area. My favorites have always been cactus wrens, woodpeckers, road runners, hummingbirds, hawks, owls, cardinals, and of course, quail. It's not uncommon to see quail families running around, usually with a mommy and a daddy, and even over a dozen little babies at times. So cute. R is for retirees. Tucson is a popular retirement destination in Arizona due to our mild winters, gorgeous desert scenery, cultural heritage, hiking, golfing, biking, museums, galleries, concerts, and restaurants. We have a lot of 55 plus communities here located all over the city, but especially in Oro Valley, Dove Mountain in Marana, Vail, and of course, Green Valley. Most of my retired clients are extremely athletic and are very happy to enjoy retired life in the sunshine, surrounded by stunning mountains in every direction. On a personal level, I have also experienced firsthand our fantastic medical care and facilities here, including specialists and cancer research programs through our University of Arizona. Feel free to reach out to me directly and I can tell you a little bit more about my personal experiences with all of that. Sawarita is a town just south of the Tohono O'odham Nation Indian Reservation and just north of the retirement community of Green Valley. It's 15 miles south of Tucson and just like Marana, is one of the fastest growing towns in all of the state of Arizona. This community is super family friendly with community pools, parks, splash pads, clubs and organized events and don't forget about Sawarita Lake. The homes in this community are generally newer and so are all of the commercial buildings and structures. The suburb is clean and it's sort of a small town with a small town kind of feel. I sell a lot of homes in this area, so give me a call if you'd like to learn more about the town. Oh, and by the way, Sawarita means little saguaro in Spanish, and don't worry if you can't pronounce it. It's kind of like the word Worcestershire Shire sauce. Most people will know what you're talking about no matter how you say it. T stands for Tanca Verde. Tanca Verde is a suburban, unincorporated community on Tucson's northeast side, with the valley characterized by the Santa Catalina Mountains to the north, North and the Rincon Mountains to the east. Tanca Verde means green tank in Spanish and is in reference to the algae in a large water tank in the area in the late 1800s. Many of the homes here are older, but they are still relatively expensive because the lot sizes are large, the mountain views are stunning, the schools are ranked highly, and many of these homes do not have homeowners associations attached, unlike many other areas in Tucson. This community is found just at the base of Mount 
Lemon Highway, so if you like hiking and camping, you will love it here. There are some restaurants and shopping opportunities, but not nearly as many as you would find in the Catalina Foothills or Oro Valley. Folks who live in Tanka Verde prefer a little privacy and freedom in life, not to mention horses, which is awesome. U is for the University of Arizona, a public land grant research university in Midtown Tucson. There are over 50,000 students currently enrolled in almost 20 separate colleges and schools and is well known for its academics, research, sports, Greek life, and affiliation with Banner University Medical Center here in Tucson. Interesting historical fact. One of the two bells rescued from the USS Arizona after the attack on Pearl Harbor has a permanent home in the clock tower of the Student Union Memorial Center on campus. I am a proud University of Arizona graduate, but I will not be revealing the year I graduated from college. V stands for Vail, a census-designated place 24 miles southeast of Tucson. Known for the nearby large cave system Colossal Cave and the Rincon Mountains District of Saguaro National Park East. This is a very family friendly community and is really growing. The Vail School District is ranked one of the best in the state, but the community is also known for being relatively popular amongst active and retired servicemen and women because of its easy access to Davis Monthan Air Force Base in Tucson and Fort Huachuca in Sierra Vista. This area is absolutely beautiful. I love the views of the Rincon Mountains. Mountains. I love the easy access to Interstate 10 from here, and even though this community is a little bit more remote than others, Vail is really growing, and all my clients who purchase homes with me in the Vail area absolutely love it. W is for Wildcats. I mentioned the University of Arizona before, and the proud mascot is the Wildcat, named for our city's Wildcats. The U of A's intercollegiate athletic teams and Wildcat athletes have won national titles in several sports, most notably men's basketball, baseball, and softball. I also have to give a shout out to the University of Arizona Wildcat Marching Band named the Pride of Arizona, which is and has always been absolutely fantastic. They even played at the halftime of the very first Super Bowl and continue to play at most of the university's athletic events. X stands for San Javier del Bach Mission, an historic Spanish Catholic mission located about 10 miles south of downtown Tucson, on the Tohono O'odham Nation San Javier Reservation. The mission that stands today was built between 1783 and 1797, making it the oldest European structure in Arizona and a stunning example of Spanish colonial architecture in the United States. Even though the mission San Javier del Bach hosts around 200,000 visitors a year, it is still an actively run mission and continues to serve the native community by which it was built. Widely considered to be the finest example example of Spanish colonial architecture in the United States, it is open to the public daily, except when being used for church services. It is worth mentioning that many residential and commercial buildings throughout the Tucson area boast a similar southwestern or Spanish architectural style. Why is for yellow Tucson sunrises and sunsets? Okay, I'm kind of cheating here because I couldn't think of anything in Tucson that started with the letter Y, but I really wanted to include our magnificent sunrises and sunsets somewhere in this video. Tucson has over 300 days of sunshine each year, but sometimes the best thing about that is the first thing in the morning and the end of the evening. I've been to Hawaii. I thought their sunsets were just like, Okay, I guess living in Tucson my whole life has turned me into a sunset snob. Last but definitely not least, in Tucson, Arizona, Z stands for the Reed Park Zoo. This 24 acre city owned and operated nonprofit zoo features more than 500 animals and receives approximately 500,000 visitors each year, which is actually pretty cool for a city this size. It is accredited and certified with the Association of Zoos and Aquariums. Families love to bring their kids to this zoo. And as a mom whose family has had a membership for probably the last 15 years, I can honestly say that the food here is actually pretty good and the kids always have a blast. Even the plant life is beautiful here. Everyone has a favorite animal, but mine have always been giraffes and elephants, which is especially exciting for me right now because recently both the mommy elephant and mommy giraffe had babies. I mean, come on, who doesn't love a 300 pound baby elephant? So cute. I hope you've learned a little bit about the ABC 
recipes of Tucson, Arizona, my hometown. As a native Tucsonan, I'm proud of this city and its culture, and I love working with clients to help them find their dream home here and help them market their beautiful properties when they go to sell their homes. Reach out to me when you or someone you know is ready to do either. All my contact information is in the description below each video on this YouTube channel. We have over 700 videos out about Tucson and real estate on the channel, so please like and subscribe to follow along to learn more about things to do and see and know about this city. Comment below with your favorite thing about Tucson. I really appreciate you hanging out with me today and I will see you in the next Tucson video.